Hello! In this demo, I'll show you how to use machine learning classification to extract features from multispectral imagery, and then we'll use those classification outputs in additional analyses. For our example today, we will identify impervious surfaces like roads, roofs, and sidewalks. Many local government institutions use impervious surfaces to calculate the stormwater bill for a property. We'll be using an object-oriented feature extraction method and the ArcGIS Pro classification tools to accomplish this. This is a multispectral image just outside of Louisville, Kentucky, provided by the Louisville-Jefferson County Information Consortium. An image like this is ideal for performing detailed feature extraction of impervious surfaces. This is a 6-inch resolution aerial orthophotograph, and it contains a near-infrared band. First, let's zoom into our area of interest. We can change the band combination of the image to highlight certain features like vegetation and roads. A color infrared band combination makes it easy to pick out the vegetated areas in this neighborhood. This color infrared band combination looks like it will work well for what we are trying to identify, since the man-made features look very different from the vegetation. The image segmentation tool requires a 3-band 8-bit image for the input, so before we get started with our classification, we will create a new 3-band color infrared product by applying a raster function to our multispectral image. Let's change this original image back to natural color so we can use it as our base map for this project. We can apply a raster function from the imagery tab. For this step, we will use the extract bands raster function. The extract bands raster function will pull out the bands we specify and use them to create a new raster data set. So we'll set our raster as our multispectral image, and we're going to pull out bands 4, 1, and 3. The segmentation tool needs an 8-bit image as the input. We can set the pixel type for our new color infrared raster in the general tab before we run the raster function. We now have a 3-band color infrared product displayed in our map that we'll use as the input into the analysis. Now that we have the three-band image, we can begin the object-based classification process. Object-based classification uses segmented images rather than classifying individual pixels. Segmentation is the process where pixels that are close together and have similar spectral characteristics are grouped into a segment. Segments exhibiting certain shapes and spectral and spatial characteristics can be further grouped into objects. During this classification process, we'll be classifying the segments and not the individual pixels. It's important to remember that running classification tools is highly CPU intensive, so we recommend that you zoom into the raster resolution before running any classification tools. We'll segment our image using another raster function, the segment mean shift. In this step, we will create the segmented image on which we'll run the classification. For this step, you can tweak the segmentation parameters to fit your desired output. Since we're segmenting the image using a raster function, it's processed on the fly, which allows you to experiment with different values until you find the output you like best. For spectral detail, a higher value equates to more segments. For spatial detail, smaller values create spatially smoother outputs. And for the minimum segment size in pixels, you generally set this value higher for higher resolution data. If you leave segment boundaries only unchecked, it will create the objects. If it's checked, it will display the segments as contours. So we now have our segmented image. Since we created this segmented image using a raster function, this layer that we're viewing is a temporary layer. The benefit here is that you can go back and quickly adjust the parameters in your raster function until you find an output that's satisfactory for your needs, without taking up valuable processing time and storage space. For what we're doing today, these results look great, so we can move on and create the full segmented image to use in our classification. To create our final segmented image, we will use the segmentation tool in our classification tools menu. Here we'll input the same parameters that we used for our raster function, and then click run to create the image. So we're using a spectral detail of 12, a spatial detail of 2, and a minimum segment size of 10. Now that we have our segmented image, we can create training samples over features in the image. We'll collect impervious features like roofs, driveways, and roads, as well as pervious features like trees, grass, and exposed dirt. We'll use the Training Sample Manager to create and save our training samples. The Training Samples Manager pane opens with a default classification schema. For this project, we've created our own schema, 
In other projects, if you don't already have a classification schema, you can create one using pre-existing training samples, import commonly used schema, or create one manually. We'll load our classification schema along with some previously collected training samples that we can add to. Now that we have our classification schema loaded, we'll import the training samples we've already collected. Now that we've loaded both our classification schema and our training samples, we can begin to collect additional training data. So let's start with some shingle roofs. We'll be using the segment picker tool to select whole segments for our training data, rather than drawing polygons manually. We'll be using our new segmented image as our selection layer, so we'll set that in the segment picker tool. When you use the segment picker tool, one click selects the shape. For the best results, we recommend that you zoom in closely when you use this tool because the segments are drawn at screen resolution. So here we'll select this roof segment, and at this resolution it appears that the outline matches the segment boundary. But if we zoom in to a higher resolution, we notice the outline doesn't really match the outline of the segment very well. If we click this roof again, we now have two different outlines outlining the roof. If you look closely, you'll see that the second selection better matches the outline of the segment. We can delete the first sample we collected in our training sample manager. Samples are added to this list in the order that you create them. So the first of these two shingle roof samples at the bottom is the one that doesn't match the outline correctly and needs to be deleted. So we'll select it in the training sample manager and then we can click the delete icon. Every shape you draw goes in as a separate class, but you can merge the classes together in the training samples manager pane. Here we have the new shingle roof sample that we collected. We'll select that and we'll select the pre-existing shingle roof samples and then click the collapse tool to merge these together. Once you've finished collecting your training samples, you'll need to save them to use in your classification step. You save them using the Save As icon up here. For today, we've created a complete training sample set to save some time, so we don't need to save these today. If you're doing this on your own at home, you'll need to save your training samples right here. Now that we've created a segmented image and we have our training samples, we have the required inputs to classify our image. For our classification, we use the classifying tool and we'll be using a support vector machine, or SVM classifier, to analyze the data and help recognize patterns in our data set. We'll input our training samples that were already collected. Since we didn't make more than 500 training samples, we'll keep the default value of 500 for the maximum samples per class. This will use all the training samples when we're working with the segmented raster data set. We'll input our segmented image that we made earlier, and we're going to check on all the attributes to use in the classification. Once we have all of our inputs set, we can run the classifier. Now that we have our classified image, we can reclassify it into only pervious and impervious surfaces. Since what this town really wants to know here is what percentage of the property is covered with impervious surfaces. We use a geoprocessing tool to reclassify this data set. We use our classified data set as the input, and we'll reclassify it based on the class names. We'll set all the impervious features to a value of 1, and we'll change the pervious features to no data. This will give us a new data set that shows only the impervious features. So let's change the symbology so we can view this impervious layer. To determine the area of impervious surfaces in each parcel, we'll first need to add the parcel data, which was provided by the county, to our map. Now that we have the parcel data in our map, we'll use the tabulate area geoprocessing tool to calculate the square footage of impervious surfaces in each parcel. The input raster is the parcel layer that we just added to the map, and we'll calculate this using the parcel ID. We'll use our impervious classified data set to calculate the area of impervious surfaces in each parcel. 
In the tabulate area tool created a new table that's been added to our map, and this contains the square footage of impervious surfaces in each parcel. Now, each parcel ID is associated with an impervious value in square feet. This table could be used by itself to determine the storm water bill for each parcel, but we can also join this table to the parcel feature class itself, which will provide more display options. And we'll join the new table with the parcel layer using the parcel ID. To make it easier to compare the amount of impervious surfaces from one parcel to another, we'll calculate the percentage of each parcel that includes impervious surfaces. And we'll add a field to our parcel attribute table for the percent of each parcel that is impervious. For number format, we want this displayed as a percentage. When we return back to the attribute table, we can see that our new percent impervious field is now included in the table. Now that we've created this new field, we can calculate the percentage of each parcel that is covered with impervious surfaces. We'll do this using the Calculate Field tool. For our equation, we'll use the impervious features, which is the shingle roofs, tin roofs, roads, driveways, sidewalks field, and we'll divide that by the parcel area. and we'll multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. Once we have our input set, we can run our calculator. You can see our percent impervious field has updated to include our newly calculated values. Parcels that have no impervious surfaces, like this one here, will still have a null value. To get a better view of the amount of impervious surfaces in each parcel, we can change the parcel layer symbology to reflect the percent impervious field you just calculated. Here we have our final map, which shows the percent of each parcel that contains impervious surfaces. Parcels with a lot of impervious surfaces are shown in red. Parcels that have very little impervious surfaces and are mostly fields or woods are shown in darker greens.